Hello, Ottawans and Ottawans from around the globe. This is part two on our complete guide to pollution. If you haven't seen part one yet, you can go ahead and take a look at it. Link to it is here, but you don't necessarily have to. This video specifically is going to cover reducing pollution and its effects and implications on your game. We're going to go over the exact mechanics of how percentages are applied and what you need to factor into your decision. Timestamps are in the description if you want to skip around. But remember to hit subscribe before you do, not to miss any future content. Without any further interruptions, let's get into it. Fighting pollution, something you desperately need to know about. There's two surefire ways to reduce global pollution. But there's also ways of reducing the amount of pollution you emit. Those are two different things. To reduce pollution, you can either plant forests, which will reduce pollution by two for 10 turns, you can also place down nature reserves. This will reduce pollution by three per turn indefinitely. There are always tons of spots you can put nature reserves. They have the little icon here and they're not super scarce. Now their effects apply locally to the territory. They don't apply to the city, just the territory. Subsequently, they also affect the global pollution levels. Let's assume you're running a deficit overall and you're actually at minus one pollution well that'll begin to detract from the overall pollution of the planet which is pretty cool it's too bad it doesn't work like that in real life places where you can place these nature reserves are berry bushes black soil caves clay craters dimension stones domesticable animals geysers hot springs huge trees huge trees hydrothermal vents marsh oasis river river spring terra rosa volcano earth waterfall algae coral reef fog iceberg reef sea ice and turbulent waters now let's talk about some ways to reduce the current amount of pollution you are emitting no, we're not going to be taking away from the global pollution here. We're just going to be reducing the amount you're emitting. We first need to go through the list and then understand how the mechanics actually applied because it is not evident at all. Sewage treatment plants unlocked with a tech social housing gives you a minus 20% pollution on farmer's quarters and plus 25 stability. It's almost worth it to pick it up strictly for the stability. Now, for the next four I'm going to mention, they all have similar effects on airports and train stations. They all offer minus one pollution on train stations and minus two pollution on airports. Hydroelectric dams. Hydro dams provide plus three industry on a river and minus 10 pollution to your maker's quarters. Solar farms are very similar, except they provide plus three industry overall and offer a minus 20% pollution on maker's quarters specifically. Wind farms, again, very similar, but they offer a plus two industry and a minus 30% pollution on maker's quarters. Finally, there's nuclear power, which provides plus two industry per uranium that you currently have and minus 30% pollution on your maker's quarters. Now, this next one is out of its league at reducing pollution. It's not actually infrastructure, but a tech. It's the fusion reactor. Once you research it, not only do you get 300 fame, but you also get plus 50% industry on your cities or outposts and minus 50% pollution on everything. Now, how is this mechanic applied? Well, it's done differently for both infrastructure and technology. Let's start with the fusion reactor technology because that's pretty much the easiest. Once you research the fusion reactor, you can go to any of your territory, check out the pollution. You'll notice it's halved, rounded up, and then subtract it from the total pollution. For example, if you're doing five pollution to a city, it halves that to 2.5, rounds it up to the nearest whole number, which is three, and then subtracts that from five, giving you two. Now we can start talking about infrastructure. Now, the way they did this is a bit silly in my opinion. For one, there's no transparency, especially in the tooltips, and for two, compounding reductions to pollution make no sense. So let's say you're doing 20 pollution in a territory and you pick up, I don't know, everyone's favorite hydro dams. Well, this subtracts 10% from all of your maker's quarters, right? So now you'll be doing 18 pollution, right? 20 minus 10%, 18. Then let's say we wanna get crazy fancy and grab solar farms. Well, solar farms are minus 20% to your pollution emitted from maker's quarters. Now one would think, hey, my total original was 20. I have hydro dams that reduce it by 10 and solar farms that reduce it by 20. So I would expect it to be producing 20 pollution minus 30% times 20, which is six, 
Probably about 14, right? Sorry, Hans, wrong guess. What actually is happening is you're taking the 20 pollution, subtracting the original 10%, then taking the total and subtracting 20% from that total. Keep in mind, we're also rounding up any time we have decimal numbers. So this actually leaves you with more pollution and less of a reduction. Honestly, it's complicated and an unnecessary way of doing this in my opinion. <laughs> if there's anybody from Paradox watching, just make it non-compounding and explicit in the tooltip. This would take a dev an afternoon and a double-double and it's finished. Finally, we come to the meat and potatoes of pollution, and that's the end condition and the effects of pollution. There are three tiers of pollution and they need to be viewed in both a local and a global sense. Let's go through the local first. When your territory, not city, individual territory, is producing one to 49 pollution, it's considered very low pollution and it has no effects. But what happens when you get to 50 to 124 pollution? Well, I'll tell you right now, this is considered low pollution which is a terrible name for it because it actually sucks. This gives you minus 15 stability and a minus 50% on food, faith, influence, science, money on all districts. You wanna try and avoid this if at all possible. Finally, you have the third tier, which is the high pollution. This is when your territory has plus 125 pollution on it. This one's actually kind of tough to get. You pretty much have to actively try for it. But basically, you get minus 20 stability and minus 100% food, faith, influence, science. At that point, you are just polluting. Now let's talk global pollution. Again, we have three tiers. The first is the 0 to 60k pollution tier, and it's considered very low pollution, and it has no effects. The 60 to 80k tier is considered low pollution. It'll reduce stability on all cities by 50 as well as reduce food on all cities globally by 10. Finally, you have high pollution, which is 80k to 100k pollution. This causes minus 100% stability on all cities, as well as minus 20 food. If you're the highest polluter at any of these stages, you'll get a little bit of fame for your pollution. Once you hit over 100k pollution globally, the world's considered uninhabitable by anyone, and the game ends in one turn. I guess technically this is considered a win. Again, I'm gonna give my two cents here. I know it's a game, but I think in fact, it's probably better we reward people for detracting from pollution. If we didn't incentivize pollution, but incentivized maybe, I don't know, reducing pollution, there should be fame awarded based on the number of nature reserves or forests or percentage of pollution reduced. And that way we can kind of pay some homage to environmentalists that's it, that's been my guide on pollution, front to back, the whole nine yards, every little mechanic explained. I really hope you enjoyed the content. It would mean a world to me if you can either give it a like, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, or just comment what you think. I reply to all of them. And I've got even better news for you. I've hand selected the next two videos on screen as ones I think you'll particularly enjoy. So if you're bored, have a look.